Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin on Friday, June 10th at about noon, and I just finished my last video where I installed Anaconda and ran Jupyter Notebook from it. So what I'm going to do now is uh, control the directory where it runs from. I did discover that uh, I, did, I clicked on this icon from my desktop and the file that I created in IPython Notebook, which I called Hello World, got plopped on my desktop as this Hello World dot IPYNB. And you'll remember I have this little uh, server running here, and whenever I make a change here, uh, like, uh, let's see, times two, it makes a request, and it uh, should show up here. Let's do a save. There, you can see the save. And now everything that's done here is actually represented in here, and I'll show you that format. Let me open a new terminal, uh, cd to tilde slash desktop, and then uh, take a look inside of there with uh, bin. So there's the JSON file, and you can recognize some of the things like setting high equal to that, and you can even see the output here, which I believe is optional whether you save the output into this file because that can become rather large in a lot of cases. Um, but it also could be a way to have your uh, output ready-made in a uh, JSON or uh, Python dict looking object just kind of for free without having to worry about uh, sending stuff to, to uh, some other uh, output uh, location. But this is not exactly what I want because uh, I want to use revision control under git and I don't particularly want this file to be in there but I want the file that this code would represent and the truth is even though this is fun to interactively develop things as soon as you get something you want to keep I'm going to copy and paste it into a text editor so I'm going to take my first crack at uh, github integration with IPython notes. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to control C out of this thing. Let's see if it disappears or whatever. Shut down this notebook. Yes. No. Oh, look, it all does all that. It, dis it gets rid of the command line screen. And then it says connection failed. You hit OK. And this still is here, but it's not connected to a Python kernel. Apparently, each uh, time you do this, there's, there's a a virtual machine of Python that's truly running your code in the background. And so, to fix the way I didn't like what happened last time, uh, I want this all to be in a directory, because without a uh, folder or a directory, you can't git init it. So, let's give this an identity. I'm, I'm getting started and learning uh, Python 3.5. I'm doing it under iNotebook. It's going to be for uh, a pipulate uh, port most likely, but I don't want to create the identity of pipulate2 or anything out there on github And this is probably gonna end up on github uh, This is a SERP project. This is um, archiving uh, Search engine results. So if I were to want it to get to become popular um, I don't know give it a cute name SERP Archive SERP save Save sir, save sir, flows off the tongue much easier. Save sir, and since we're already CD to our desktop, I can CD right into save sir, and then I can uh, git init. Now it's a git repository. If I do ls hyphen la, you can see there's a directory in there called git, but there's really uh, nothing uh, in there as far as real files that I'm working on. So I'm going to be copying and pasting stuff into this from IPython over here. And when I do, I want it to be accessible over here as sort of a library. So let's uh, vim and let's make up just a file name that we're going to be importing 
Um, and this is where you can give it an identity again, save serp.py. And inside of there, we'll do def hello world. We'll make a hello world function and we'll simply return hello world. Save that. Now, because it's uh, on the desktop and uh, let's see, we can just drop this in there. We can go in here and now we can once again run and we'll drop this in there. Why not? Uh, we can once again double click Navigator. We get this window. We launch our notebooks. Minimize this guy. We're done with it. And there's our server again, and there is our IPython tab again. And it knows that the project save serp. Oh, that's a directory. Wow, that feels a lot like it actually ran from the desktop and not from inside that directory. So we can tell right away by selecting new Python 3. And uh, test equals test save. And we'll see where the file was made. Yay! Untitled right there. This is what I want. Uh, I'll call that uh, test. Go back over here. You can see the file named changed to test. But here is the real test. Import save serp and execute that. Now I should have a function in namespace called save serp dot hello world. And you have to invoke it as a as a method. has no attribute hello world. Well, let's take a look how I defined it. Def hello world, hello world. That will uh, make a difference. We save it, we re-import it, and we execute. And same thing. Now, it might be that it's because re-executing keeps that stuff saved in memory. So I'm going to restart my kernel. I'm sure there are much more graceful ways to do this than restarting a kernel. But if that sort of caching did occur from that runtime, there you go. It clears it out. So this shows a number of things. I am going to put, be able to put this into revision control system. So I drop out into a shell. I do git status. Ah, a bunch of stuff. Very interesting. Well, the only thing that should be in revision control is the one called uh, savesert.py. So we're going to create a git init. I had already dropped out of, um, out of uh, Vim, but we're going to need to uh, go back in. So uh, anything with a dot in front of it that's made to be invisible uh, should be filtered. Anything ending with dot app anything with double underscore leading before it, and anything ending with IPYNB. I'm certainly not going to be able to remember that. So I'll just copy this and use the operating system's copy buffer. And then uh, I uh, exit out, and I'm back in Vim. Now I'll do BADD for adding a buffer, dot git ignore. And you seems like nothing happened, but if I go B2 for my second buffer, here's my git ignore file. I hit I for insert, do the operating systems paste. I see that I have that weird indent problem uh, where Vim tries to keep indented lines you know, working correctly as you type. So all you do is you do set paste, you let Vim know you're about to paste, and you redo it, and uh, you know it handles that. Now I want to delete these leading spaces. That's Control V. Up arrow, right arrow, oops, D for delete. And we don't need all of these uh, with the dots. All we need is one of them, dot anything. 
will be uh, filtered. Anything with that extension belongs to um, dot anything, anything. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, I don't know whether a dot follows regular expressions or not, but we'll know in a second. It's easy enough to test. Anything dot app, anything with uh, double under, well, no. PyCache, I'm gonna leave it as PyCache, leave that right there. We certainly don't want that, and this is already covered. So let's save that, let's drop out to the shell, and do git status again. Okay, I got it all right on the first time. Now we have to git add, uh, oh, well, git is ignoring anything with a dot in front of it. I think I'm being a little too uh, restrictive. So I am once again going to uh, drop out of the shell and uh, paste it again from our copy buffer. And now I am going to uh, look at the PNY, no, it's not the PNYBs, it's the dot things that are in question. So anything with a swap. So dot swap, that's from Vim. Um, I'll leave this Macintosh uh, DS store. It's uh, reasonable to filter that all the time. And, uh, and this one sounds like it's a pretty common reoccurring one, so I'll leave that. And now we'll drop out to the shell again and do another git status. And we should see the git ignore. We don't see the git ignore. Did I leave that line? Yeah, I did. There's our git ignore, so I'm going to do git add git ignore. And uh, let's see, is that everything? Yeah, git commit. Oh, well, uh, git status, I'll show that once more. You'll have a little red and a little green. Uh, git ignore was added, but I want to add save serp as well. Now I can commit. Git commit all with a message added initial files. Not the init files, but the initial files. So um, git status. Now I have the first commit, uh, and it's a it's a repository I can commit and save. Now it's not connected to GitHub yet, but uh, I have a viable system now where I can do my work over here in IPython, and as soon as I like it, I simply pop over here. I like to go full screen and make the font a bit bigger. And uh, go back into Vim, B0. Oh, B1, sorry, I'm getting confused with uh, Tmux, but I'm using Tmux a lot. Vim starts with a one index on its buffers and uh, tmux starts with a zero, but that will be uh, for another video. So anytime I am working, let's see where my screens go. Anytime I'm working here and I do something that I like, I copy it, I paste it over here, and now I can use it because I can import it. I can turn right around and import it, but it now is controlled under uh, the Git system. And when I uh, connect this to GitHub, this repo, I'll be able to get push and have it always on GitHub and nice and safe and off my local machine or at least in more than one place uh, even while I have this wonderful advantage of the IPython uh, Jupyter Notebook environment to do my interactive development. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I guess that's IPython, uh, Git, you know, quick and dirty integration. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon and don't forget to subscribe.